Hey, hey, what is up my Pottery Posse? I hope you are doing wonderful today. Today we will be looking into the wonderful world of test tiles. Test tiles are a wonderful thing to have around your pottery studio because not all kilns fire the exact same way. So something that I show you that I fired it's gonna be different than something you fired in your kiln because temperatures vary and not all kilns can do a hold, like mine cannot do a hold. There's only so much control that I have in my kiln. Can't always rely on the pictures that you see on Pinterest and things like that. Whatever I show you, go ahead and take that with a grain of salt because it may not be the same for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right guys, today we are making test tiles, but we're gonna do it on the wheel. Make sure to wedge way more than you think because we're going to be taxing the clay and pushing it further than it probably wants to go. Make sure you're starting off with a very large round bat. If you don't use a bat, that's perfectly all right, but you'll have to wait until it's leather hard to take it off. So keep that in mind. I am throwing three pounds, but you can do whatever you're comfortable with. We're gonna start off like normal, but instead of leaving a certain thickness for the bottom of the vessel, we're actually going to go all the way down to the bat. And then we're gonna start pushing the clay outward until it almost reaches the edge of the bat. Make sure this donut is a bit on the wide side so you can make a rim on both the inside and the outside just in case any glazes are drippy. Whoopsies! I was touching the clay as I slowed down and sped up the wheel to find the right speed and I made an unfortunate divot. Just do it in one foul swoop and make a tiny plate rim. Do a pull or two in the center. Make sure that these are thick enough to support themselves when you cut them into individual tiles but also tall enough to do one, two, and three layer sections with your glaze. It's a good idea to put in some grooves. Making grooves is very helpful to see how the glaze reacts with smooth and recessed areas. Once these are cleaned up to your liking, very carefully cut it from the bat with your wire cutters. Make sure to hold the wire cutters nice and tight, releasing bits at a time as you get to wider sections. Set those aside and let them dry to leather hard. Cutting these is pretty self-explanatory. All you need to do is eyeball it or measure it. Mine are about an inch and a half to two inches wide. And I used a potter's knife, but you can always use wire cutters to cut them down to size.
This next part is totally optional. I decided to make holes in the top to hang them on my pegboard with all my other pottery tools. If you decide to do this as well, make sure that you measure whatever you're hanging them on with shrinkage in mind. I'm gonna be using these to test my high fire glazes, so I need to make sure to account for more shrinkage than I would for a low fire. And now once these are all dry, let's go ahead and bisque them. And now for glazing and labeling. I am using an Ameco underglaze pencil to do all my labeling. If you tried to do this with a normal pencil, it would just burn off in the kiln. If you don't have an underglaze pencil, you can just paint on underglaze to label instead or just use a Sharpie after they're fired. Underglaze pencils can be hard to use, but I have found that dipping the underglaze part in some water helps to soften it up just enough to write a little bit better. Here you can see where I did one, two, and three layers of glaze. Just putting some clear glaze over my labels.
Well, that's it guys. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I really hope you learned something from it. And until then, I will see you in the next one. God bless y'all. Bye.